Hey, what's up, turtles? It's Crick here with Black Outdoors. Today, I'm going to be doing a review on these loophole Rogue Compact 8x25 Poro waterproof binoculars. Now, it's a lot in that in that name. I'm going to go around it and really talk about the specifics of the binocular. Sort of talk about the philosophy of how to buy a binocular if, if you want it for certain instances. But all that's going to be accomplished as I go around and talk about the specs of the binoculars. And these come in this leather, uh, pleather maybe, leather, not sure exactly what the material is. Uh, and I almost forgot, you can get these for around 90 bucks, which I think is a pretty good deal for the quality of optics you're getting in this, um, in this pair of binoculars. A little bit of a attachment here for a belt, put on your side. <clears throat> like I said loop hold, hook and loop fastening, a little brushed interior for soft, for uh, not to scratch the lenses. Not sure exactly if it's a poly or a nylon brush, but it's soft to the touch. And I really like this case. I really like this case. All right, so I'm just gonna run around the specs real quick, and then I'll get into the binoculars. <clears throat> Weight, 12.7 ounces. These are really, this is a compact set of binoculars. You can see this in front of me, my hand behind it for scale real quick. Uh, and these are sort of, uh, which I want to say, the intent for these is for, you know, someone who wants to hunt and wants a compact set of binoculars with quality optics. And it works well not just for hunters, for me as well, like backpacking, hiking. I can take these out, get quality optics, really small design, waterproof, which makes it really nice. But back to the binoculars, 12.7 ounces, 4.3 ounces, or excuse me, 4.3 inches as it is, little um, eye cup uh, cover to protect these lenses here. Nice rubberized. <laughs> you heard that, it's probably ordnance being exploded. Twist the eye cups, it's because it is compact. Uh, you know, it's really small, but having these twist up eye cups really help increase the comfort of the binoculars when I get it into, actually into my eye socket. Sony, if you want to sh show, because it, because when they twist, I can really get it up close, get a really nice even field of view. But you can see, if I close it, it's just up in my face, it's not comfortable. So the twist is nice. Haven't had any problems with these, haven't had any problems with these getting, you know, too much dirt or grind or they don't want to open or anything. So far, so good with these. Uh, 8x25, you can see that here probably. I'll get into that, what that means, what those numbers mean in a little bit. So I'm gonna keep working around the binoculars. They are water, waterproof, sort of this rubberized, uh, made really strong, really nice. It's a Poro Prism design, which I'll talk about again. And fully, uh, fully multi-layered coating of the lenses. I don't know if you could see it. See, like there's like green and blue hues. If you can, I don't know if it's catching it or not. What that does is uh, anti anti reflection property. Fully coated, which means you know, obviously, fully multi-layered coating means you know, high, higher quality of the binocular. Something to look forward to or look into if you want a pair of binoculars. I think that's pretty much the most important things uh, of the binoculars. But let me start talking now about the 8 and 25. The 8 uh, of binoculars, or the first number in the set of binoculars, is going to be the magnification of the binocular. And this is 8, so what that means is if I see, we'll say a deer, you know, I look at it with my naked eye and I see it off in the distance, and then I put these up to my, put these up and look through them. That deer is going to appear eight times closer than it does with my naked eye. These binoculars are going to magnify by eight. And you might think a higher number, a higher number is going to mean a better binocular, but that's not always the case because the, the that higher magnification means it's going to be much more difficult if if you're holding a big set of binoculars with your hand for an extended period of time. You're going to get a lot of shake, and you're going to get a lot of shake when you're viewing this without using something to brace your hands with, as like a you know monopod, tripod, resting on, on a log, anything like that. Something else to keep in mind, because these are compact. Um, this, this second number, this 25 millimeter, that's actually a, a, a specific uh, unit. It's in millimeters, and what that is refers to is the objective lens. This lens on the these two lens on the bino uh, binoculars, and the objective lens. And that number basically referred to how much light is, is captured in the binoculars. And where that comes into play is for low light settings. And pretty much that's what you're gonna sacrifice with a compact, uh, compact set of binoculars. This is how I like to wear them, by the way, when I'm walking through the forest on my neck. 
Uh, but what you're really going to, you know, compromise for a compact set of binoculars is its ability to really pick up a lot of light in low light settings. If you're hunting and you're scouting, you know, a lot of animals are moving at that times of the day, so it may be very important for you to have larger ob objective lenses. But because these are compact, 25 millimeters, uh, you know, I'll take that compromise. For what I've been able to do with these, I've been really happy with them. Uh, I'm really not, really not upset or disappointed for its low light um, capability or, in cap or incapability. All right, so we got the magnification, the objective lens. What else do I want to move around, talk about? Here we go, the diopter, diopter setting. You can pick this up on this ICOP, there's a plus and minus here, this little dial. And what that does allows you to specifically focus these to your eye. You, it's through a process, you know, you block your left eye or the left lens, focus on an object with one eye, repeat the process, and that specifically focuses it to your set of eyes. You know, someone else might pick these up and it might not work as well as might be as clear as for you, but then what that allows you to do is just use the center focus, which is what this dial is, what you are looking at before. So, so once I set this to my eyesight, which I've done, I can just put these up, try to focus on an object, and just use the center focus really quick. And this is really, really smooth action. And I say this is really very crisp, very crisp um, uh, set of binoculars, really high quality optics, quality optics. And this is referred to as a Poro design. And a Poro design is in kind of sort of contrast to a roof design, a roof prism design. And the Poro refers to, I believe this might be a reverse Poro, but the Poro basically means you have your eye cups or your, you know, your eye, um, I forget what these lenses are called, but these ones, and your objective lens is here. Instead of them being in a straight line, like a roof prism would be, that's reserved for larger binoculars, this Poro takes it here and sort of, the, there's, the prisms in here move the light and move the, the, um, the image to keep this compact. And that's where the Poro is, is utilized in compact designs in the reverse Poro, which I believe this is. And the actual prisms these use in here are known as the BAK-4, BAK-4, which I believe is uh, some of the highest quality uh, Poro prisms that you can have in the optics. I want to stress that if you do want to pair binoculars, do the research and make sure you get quality optics because it's really, in my opinion, pointless to buy a cheap pair of binoculars, take them out in the field with you, and you can't see an image clear. That just, to me, seems like absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Done with my rant. I think that's pretty much everything, everything I wanted to hit on this for the most part. You know, I've used these, uh, we're standing next to a creek right now, and these have come in handy for me scouting for a buddy of mine fishing. I'll go upstream, upstream or downstream for him if, and uh, you know do some scouting, check out holes maybe across the stream or he can't see. You know, look under logs, look under rocks. You know, look for fish silhouette all, you know, on the stream and stuff and whatnot. I've used these to help identify trees. Conifers where the, the cones are, you know, 100 feet in the air and the first branch is 50 feet in the air. A set of binoculars that have quality, you know, crisp images they can help me identify, identify trees, all that good stuff. You know, it's uh, it's close focus, close focus length is I think right around four meters, lower four meters, fourteen feet. Oh, and there's one more thing I forgot to mention, which is the exit pupil, which this one has a three point one. So you don't have to pick it up, but there's two little dots in the center of these, two little lights. And that's literally known as the exit pupil. And that's measured again by millimeters. And what that means is you take the objective lens and divide it by the power. In this particular instance, it gives me 3.1 millimeters. And that again sort of refers to its ability to pick up light in low light settings. And if you really care about being able to do that, you know, compact design might not be for you, but you want to look for a pair of binoculars where that exit pupil number is about four millimeters or higher which tells you that the, the, the pair of binoculars or monocular, I'm sorry, I saw a lepidoptrin flying over the creek. Um, it'll tell you how much low light or how well it'll work in low light settings. That's pretty much it. You know, these are really great, like I said, because they're waterproof. And if you're out in the, out in the field like me a lot in Stony, or you're working, all that stuff, having a compact, sort of rugged, waterproof set of binoculars, I think is really freaking cool.
really really crisp images in this. You know, I'm not a huge expert on binoculars. There's maybe something comparable to this, um, but these are not for birders. Obviously, they're compact. If you really want to get into birding or see small birds off in distances, these aren't going to be for you. But for you know other things I've mentioned, these these may work well. This is Crick signing out with Black Outdoors. Later, turtles. <laughs>